Welcome back to the 167. We are doing more I Love My Church stories. I am Carissa Motley. I am here today with my friend Landon Taylor. Thanks so much for coming in, Landon, and telling your story about what you love about new life. Yeah. So thanks for being here. Thanks for asking. Yeah, no problem. So if I say to you, as Pastor Rick has been saying on Sundays, I love my church because, how would you finish that sentence? There's a lot there. Um, I love my church because... I think at the foundation, this church has, they've shown me what it's like to fall in love with Jesus, you know? And so I grew up in the church. Um, I don't want I don't want this to be too long, but I grew up in the church. I was introduced to God at a very early, early age along with Jesus. I was saved at 14 and I've always believed in God. Okay. Um, but I think there's a, a, a pretty big difference between believing in God and being saved and, and being in love with your King. Yeah, definitely. You know? And so I think the very first and foremost reason I love this church is because they showed me how to do that. Cool. Yeah. I would love to hear more about how that happened for yeah. you. Uh, but real quick first, how long have you and your family, when you can say their names, how long have you guys been at New Life and what brought you here? Yeah. So my wife, Blaze, just like the fire, B-L-A-Z-E. Um, my wife, Blaze, and I and our two kids, Peyton and Reese, they are Peyton is 10, Reese is eight. Uh, we've been here for three years, this month, three years. Awesome. So um, second part of the question is what, what brought you here? Oh yeah. Well, you and Lucas. <laughs> so there's a, that's the short version of the story. <laughs> yeah. The, the, there's a string of events there that happened. One was COVID. Yeah. Uh, the other is we were going to church in Overland Park about 30 minutes away. And, um, our church was closed at the time and we were building a relationship with y'all yeah. our daughters and yeah. you guys living in the yeah. neighborhood. And, um, you asked us to come, you know, and it's, it always feels good to be wanted. Sure. And that's the way we felt. And then we came, um, and that, that feeling continued. It felt like new life wanted us here. So, um, you guys, you and Lucas invited us. And then the other thing that, that brought us here was simple as geography. Um, we were driving 30 minutes to church and now we drive three. Yeah. And that's, that's much easier. It makes a big difference. It's much easier. For sure. So. And there's definitely something about, like, you know, we live in the same neighborhood, so we mm. see each other a lot, but being able to see the people that you go to church Correct. with and... Be in community with them is correct. a big part of what makes it appealing to yeah. be at church. And, and to that point, Blaze and I always wanted, we wanted our kids to go to church with the people that they went to school with. Yeah. You know, to be in the same community, the people that they went to school with. And so um, we, we where we were going to church, that was going to be very difficult. Sure, and of so course. And so this provided an opportunity for that. Yeah. You see them at school. You see them at the soccer That's fields. Right. You see them all over the place. And we do. Yeah, right? for I, sure. I mean, we do. Absolutely. So. Yeah, it's been great. Um, so how has being a part of New Life impacted either or both your relationship with God and your relationship with other people? And we can also cycle back to that first question yeah. that you talked about the reasons why you love your church and how it helped you fall in love with Jesus. Yeah. So any of that. Sure. Um, so the church that I grew up in, I, I, I've said this a lot, I love my church you sure. know, that I grew up in, but um, you know, it, very, as simple as, you know, instruments. Mm-hmm. You know, um, there's something about whenever there's instruments involved, at least for me personally, that helps me connect, you know, and, yeah. and I had never had that. Yeah. And so that's one thing immediate that I received from from New Life, but also just the heart of worship. Okay. You know, seeing some emotion. There wasn't a lot of emotion in my church growing up. And so seeing people have the emotion in worship itself helps you draw, you know, closer to the feet of Jesus. For sure. Um, next, life groups. You know, that in and of itself, the rawness of it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not just study, but it's it's real life. Yeah. You know, especially the the age group mm -hmm. that we're working with. And then why don't you just tell everybody, and if they're not familiar, next is our young adult ministry. Correct. So 18 to 25 year olds. Right. And you and Blaze lead a life group of 18 Correct. to 25 year olds. Yes. What has that been like? Oh, it's been awesome. You know, we started it with y'all and, and <laughs> sure. then, you know, we, we divided and conquered from there. But um, man, to see that age group on fire. Mm hmm. Uh, it's an inspiration because yeah. I know I wasn't there at that age. Yeah. And to see the, the, these, I, I call them kids, but right. young adults, right. you know, on fire and they're searching and um, they're leading. Yeah. You know, they really are. For and, sure. and the way that they grab people and pull them in and, and bring them into community. So just to see Jesus working there, mm -hmm. you know, has been really, really encouraging and, and inspiring. Like, yeah. I want to use that word. Um but as far as, you know, my relationship with God, we also have, you know, freedom's a part of that. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go to freedom and you hear testimonies. And so this church really, <clears throat> it nor how can I say this? I don't want to say it normalized sin, but what it did is 
it allowed people to talk about their sin, I guess. Yeah. You know, yeah, growing up definitely. in church, there was a, there was a call every every Sunday for someone to come forward, but hardly anybody ever did. Right. And this church basically took sin and said, guess what? You're not going to win. And we're going to talk about it. Yeah. And when that door opened, it was like, oh, wow. Like, we really can talk about this stuff. And then you feel so much better after. Sure. Because, you you know, the more you talk about it, the closer you get to Jesus. And so um, my relationship with God changed a lot through worship, life group, and probably freedom. Awesome. So That's really cool. Yeah. I love hearing that. Yeah. And there is just, I, w- I would agree, I think that there is something really powerful about being able to talk about real things. Absolutely. Right? Talk about this is actually what's going on in my life. And not all churches, but a lot of churches, you feel like you have to come in and put on a facade, right. be somebody that you're not, uh, not admit to right. all the things that are going wrong in your life. Right. And I think that's not what we're supposed to do, right? I agree. So that's awesome. So what keeps you coming back here? Um, so part of it's conviction. Okay. So I was actually talking with this about this with somebody today, but part of, of my faithfulness to a church is, is a conviction that I've got. I've, I've taught for a long time that, um, the relationship with Christ to his church is very similar to, he uses all throughout scripture, you know, the illustration of, of a marriage right. between a husband and wife. And, you know, just because I get maybe frustrated with my wife or, mm-hmm. or, you know, Blaze and I don't see eye to eye on something. It doesn't mean I leave. Right. You know, it doesn't mean she doesn't leave. And and I think Christ calls us to be, in fact, I know he does. He calls us to be faithful to our faith family. Right. And I don't want to treat my church like a Walmart versus Costco. Mm. You know, like just because you don't have what I want doesn't mean that I'm going to come over here. Okay. You know, yeah. um, I think if, if there are some, no church is perfect. Right. Right. No of church course. is perfect. Of course. Um, but if there are things you don't like about you, you know, get involved, mm-hmm. right? But I don't want part of part of us keep coming back is we want to be committed and we want the people here to know that we're going to be faithful to them. Awesome. You know, even if there's things that, uh, that that come up that we don't necessarily agree with, it doesn't mean we're rushing for the door. Sure, right? We want sure. people to know that we're here. Yeah, so I think that's that's really good. Pastor Rick was talking on Sunday about the concept of faithfulness and obedience. Right, right? that right. this church is built on the idea of faithfulness and obedience, and so I, that's a great way to yeah. think about. Being faithful is faithfully being committed to your church, right? There's right. a lot of ways we can be faithful. Yeah. That's a great point. Thanks. Um, what else keeps me coming back? So I, I'll, I'll bring life groups back into it. Yeah. Our, our life group, the, the group that we're doing, um, they're so on, on fire right now. I, I don't want to say I'm leading them because I'm just trying not to screw up. You know, I just want to step out of the way and say, you guys just keep going and then, yeah. you know, interject myself where I right, need to. Right, right. Um, because they need that. A little, they're 18 to 25. You know, you right. know, they need some of that. Right. But it, I love watching it. You know, yeah. life group itself, you know, them growing and us, you know, I've, I'm very open with them. Like, hey, we want this to grow and mm-hmm. then we want to split off. Like the mm-hmm. goal here is we want, we want other people to experience this. Right. And so just being a part of that, that in and of itself probably keeps me coming back. But I'll go back to the other one, worship. I yeah. love Sunday mornings. I do. I love worship. Raising my hands is new to me. And it, and it makes me uncomfortable, <laughs> right? It does. But it's funny that every time, that. every time I do it, it's like, oh, that was, that was it. You know, that I'm supposed to do that. Yeah. It's okay to come to the feet of Jesus sure. and emotionally just, you know, kind of unload. Yeah. Um, I think he likes that. Can I ask you a follow-up question on mm-hmm. that, which we did not prepare for? So this is a little on the spot is that, um, so your son Peyton mm-hmm. is now in fifth grade. So he sits in service with mm-hmm. you guys. Uh, how has that, has that affected your view of the worship service differently? Do you feel like that gives you a different perspective in sort of how you encounter the service um, and think about what he's experiencing there as well? I sure. Know. Yeah. So <clears throat> I, we teach our kids that we want you to not only be able to come and talk to us about anything, but um, we want them to be able to worship as well and not be afraid. Yeah, you know that, that talking about Jesus or stopping and praying or whatever or singing to a to a, a gospel song mm-hmm. in in the car is mm-hmm. all of those are okay things. Yeah, but the best way for them to know that that's okay is to see me doing that. Definitely. Yeah. You know, I ne- I I never want my kids now that Peyton is in there and can watch. Mm-hmm. I never. I never want him to be to say be able to say that you know dad wasn't worshiping yeah. that you know when I, when dad was in church dad had his heart in it you know I want okay. him to be able right. to say those things yeah. and so yeah it has because you know I want to be an example yeah you know that's um, really cool I want him to be you know kids look at you, their parents look at me and go oh like I can sing really loud you know yep. um, you yeah know, I can close my yeah. eyes and 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 raise my hands and and 
whenever you worship like that, it opens the door for communication with Jesus so much more. Yeah. Um, and so hopefully, yes, to answer your question, yes, it does change it, but hopefully that's the main thing he sees. I love that. Thanks. That's so cool. So how do you feel like our mission here, right? Love God, love people. Mm -hmm. I know you've talked about a lot of things that are connected to this. How do you feel like you are called to be part of the mission that mm -hmm. we believe in here at New Life? Yeah, so <clears throat> personally, I've been going through this last couple of months is, you know, how am I called? You know, and I keep getting that you need to pay attention to your family. Mm. Like right now, your your family is your calling and and, and let everything else. You respond you be responsible with your family and, mm -hmm. and, and, and then whenever you're ready, I'm gonna use you. So I have tried to in one sense kind of push how I'm being called, not to the back, but I really want to put what what I can control, so yeah. to speak, right at the front, which is which is my family and myself. Um Next, life groups. Of course, we mm -hmm. feel called just because we're leading one. Yeah. Um, and you're doing great. Thanks. It's so great. I, <laughs> it's it's such a great life group. I see the same thing. Yeah. Those The young adults in your group are just, they're super connected, first of all. Yep. Uh, just real quick, tell everybody like what has happened with your group lately. You guys meet Sunday nights, but <laughs> also... Yeah, so <laughs> our group, and this is the kids, right? But we meet Sunday nights. Um, and then they go... And they do things together on Tuesday night. They go and do worship somewhere on Thursday night. And then they come over back to our house on Friday night. And we were watching The Chosen all the way through. And so, I mean, that ended up, you get touches, right? Every yeah. Multiple touches throughout yeah. the week. It's not just Sunday morning. Right. It's not just Sunday evening. Right. And we're constantly texting. And, and you know, the group chats always roll. And so um, that in and of itself encourages you throughout the week. Definitely. Right? So yeah. you can talk about something on Sunday and then they get, they get to reconnect and bring it back up on Tuesday and then maybe on Thursday mm -hmm. and then on Friday. It, I mean, there's just, you know, that's kind of like the Acts 242 church, right? Absolutely. You, you know, and so um, watching that kind of play out yeah. is, a, is a lot of fun. I think it's a, like, it's really truly, yes, it's a community mm -hmm. that, has that has been created and that has started to kind of hone itself. I think it's really exciting to watch uh, Lucas and I talk a lot about, you know, Gen Z, they kind of have a bad rap right now, but right. I, they are really hungry for authentic community yep. and for authentic relationships with people. Um, and so as an elder millennial, mm -hmm. right, that mm -hmm. is the demographic that I am in. Uh, I see that. And mm -hmm. I think it's really exciting. And I love that, you, like being a part of it is really it is inspiring. I would agree with you on that. Yeah, community and hungry. Those are two good words to use it. You know, it is a community mm -hmm. with them, and they are really hungry. Yeah. And and again, that's inspiring because I wasn't that hungry at that age. Yep. And so just to sit back and, and kind of watch that and be a part of it a little bit, it's like, okay, this is really neat. It is really cool. You know? Yeah. Is so. there anything else on that, on how you feel like love God, love people plays out for you? Yeah. Um, you know, freedom is great. Mm -hmm. You know, I go, and I don't know how I'm called there. I just know that I show up. You know, I just show up. I love the relationships that are being yeah. built there. But um, I think that once a week, you know, with the homework and all the mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. like that that forces you to dive into the Word daily. It for forces sure. you um, to pray a yeah. lot and, yeah. and forces you to be prayed for. And those are all scriptural things, right? They're great. Right. And the more reps you get at that, the better. And that's what, what Freedom calls. So um, I don't know how I'm being called in Freedom. But, but I like what's being built there, and I like what's showing me personally from a selfish perspective. But um, love God and love people, it's as simple as it gets, you know? And so I think if if we focus on loving God, and then as of right now, the, the season of life that I am of loving my family and, mm -hmm. and, you know, really teaching us to pray together, mm -hmm. not just, you know, as Lucas says, but before sleepy time right. and, and before right. meals, but you know, whenever we're frustrated or we're scared or we're yeah. angry, you know, all of us getting in the rhythm of praying, then that has to have a ripple effect of our relationships. You know, when our friends, whenever we're frustrated with each other, or we have right. a disagreement, we can, can we pray together? You know? Yeah. Um, so I think that may be part of the call, but um, that's just where I'm at right now. So you're just along for the ride, really, it sounds like. Yeah. That's I hate good. to say that there's no plan, but I just, I'm just kind of trusting God that he's going to yeah. use me whenever he thinks I'm ready. And right now Absolutely. I'm just focusing on that. Well, he's using you right now. Thanks. For sure. In a for lot sure. of ways. And it's been so awesome to be on this journey with you guys Thanks. and to be friends and to just be able to see all of this come in to play. Yeah. Um, it's been really great. Thank you. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much for coming on today, telling mm -hmm. people a little part of your story. Yeah. Um, again, this is Landon Taylor. If you guys want to connect with Landon, uh, he would love to talk to you. So um, thanks so much for being here. And 
We are going to have more I Love My Church stories as part of this series, so make sure that you stay tuned into the podcast. Thanks, guys. See you next time.